Hey guys, it's Catalia. Do you hear that sound? I think there may be rattlesnakes present. guys so I am currently so I'm currently on my way I'm gonna go check out my buddy Nathan's collection with big country snake removal and they're in the future gonna be opening up a serpentarium so these animals that you're gonna see I'm gonna be helping with and working with some so you'll get to see them and get familiar with them um, but for the initial video I wanted to just show you guys what he has and basically just have a little fun today and do a little tour so all right let's go check it out this is Nathan. Hey, dog. Ooh. Oh, no one knows that. Blooper! Okay, he's the owner of Big Country Snake Removal, and this is Tony, and he's the herpetologist. So, together, they own Big Country Serpentarium, which is up and coming. When do you expect it to be open? Oh, man. <laughs> when I retire! Basically, they have awesome snakes. I don't do that many venomous things on my channel, but that's about to change. And I'm gonna be helping them out more so, and you'll get to learn a lot of these snakes and they'll become familiar. Yeah, you guys wanna show me some snakes? Sure, awesome. Let's look. So this is the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Crotalus adamantius. So this is the largest species of rattlesnake in the United States. I mean, they get a lot larger than this. Mm -hmm. The record, I believe, was eight feet. So they can be found in the eastern part of the United States. These guys like to live in like palmetto-like environments. Um, they are island hoppers as well. They can actually be found in the Florida Keys. Um, they're actually really good at swimming. In the wild, these guys will consume a variety of prey. Uh, rodents, they are especially fond of rabbits. Um, they are large enough to easily eat a rabbit. It is a type of diamondback. There's another diamondback rattlesnake called the western diamondback rattlesnake and that is a different species and that one is found more west. We see it a lot here in Texas. They're, yep, yeah, they're very common in Texas. And if you look at the tail over here, you see he's vibrating his tail. Doesn't have much of a rattle on him, <laughs> uh, but he's still rattling his tail. He doesn't know that, that he doesn't have a rattle at the end of it. But normally he would have a large rattle that is made of keratin, which is the same material that your fingernails are made out of. So when he vibrates that, it produces a sound, which is characteristic, of course, of a rattlesnake. Now, rattlesnakes are pretty cool and that they're only found in the Americas. A lot of people that commonly encounter rattlesnakes uh, consider them a nuisance, but if you think about it in the grand scheme of the entire world, you do not find rattlesnakes in Africa, you do not find rattlesnakes in Australia, Asia. So they're only found in the Americas. So there's a lot of different species of rattlesnakes. There's over 30. So it's pretty cool, um, the large variety of rattlesnakes that exist. So this is a Gila monster, a very fat one. So these guys are found obviously in Arizona, Utah. So the name Heloderma, which is the group that these guys belong to, is the genus name, means studded skin. So if you look all the way on their scales, you'll see all these little projections on there and that's their studded skin. And it's actually on their bones. So if you actually saw the skull of a Gila monster, that will actually be on the bone structure itself. Now this is actually a venomous species. There's another species that's also venomous. It's the much larger beaded lizard of Mexico. And essentially, if you look on the lower lip here, you'll actually see some swellings there. And that is actually the venom glands. And what happens is when they bite something, their venom is used mostly for defense because what they actually consume are nestling animals such as birds or eggs, things that don't really require any venom to subdue. So it's used for defensive mechanism. It actually has a groove on their teeth that when they bite something, they inject venom and the venom goes up these canals essentially up the side of their teeth via capillary action and then they inject it into the wound. And this is why they're so brightly colored, kind of like the coloration of a bee. It's called a posomatic coloration in which an animal demonstrates to a predator using dramatic coloration that it is venomous um, in this case and that's how they defend themselves. They're very slow moving animals and they can spend the vast majority of their time underground in burrows and actually only consume a couple of meals in a year and they can sustain themselves 
by using the fat reserves on their tail throughout the year. So they spend most of their time in burrows. Um, they'll come out in early morning and at night. Um, they're the most active during the monsoon season when there's the most rains and it actually uh, increases their activity level. One of the coolest animals ever. So this is a snouted cobra. So this particular species of venomous snake belongs to a group of snakes known as the alapids. So unlike the rattlesnakes that we showed you earlier that are pit vipers, these guys don't have uh, pits and they also have essentially what we call fixed fangs. In the United States, the only alapids that we actually have that are true alapids are our coral snakes. So those will only be the alapids you would find here in the United States. This particular species is from Africa, so this is a snouted cobra. So it does have the ability to spread a hood. Um, there's there's actually a lot of different species of alapids that are called cobras, but they're not true cobras. So this is a true cobra. It belongs under a genus called Naja, whereas your king cobra, for example, even though it's called a cobra, is actually not a true cobra. So when these guys feel threatened, what they'll do is they'll actually raise the upper third of their body. They have elongated ribs and they'll spread a hood and they'll also hiss. They'll go and basically that tells their predator to stay away. Um, that I am a venomous animal and that I am afraid for my life. Hopefully the animal will pay attention and back up. Um, so there's a lot of different varieties of alapids and some of the most famous alapids of course are our mambas, our cobras, are all alapids. So they belong to this group called the alapid. She's actually pretty chill. I mean that was- She's Pretty chill right now. Yeah. <laughs> you see her on a bad day, bro. All right, so this is a West African green mamba. And ah, that's really cool. You can actually see the partial hood um, that this animal is actually showing. So as I mentioned earlier with cobras, this is an alapid. However, it is not a true cobra, but doesn't mean it can't spread a hood. And this is a fine example of that. So this animal feels threatened, so it's obviously spreading a smaller hood. It's not as wide as your true cobras, but it's still a hood. Mambas, unfortunately, they're pretty infamous animals, obviously. They're found in Africa. There's a lot of stories to tell about mambas. The reality is, of course, is that they don't really seek people out. They're not out to get people. They do live in contact with people because of habitat loss, but they try to stay away from people. Mambas are very, very fast. In fact, the black mamba being the fastest uh, venomous snake, they're extremely fast. So there's several different species of mamba. You have West African green mamba, East African green mamba, Jameson's mamba, and of course, the very famous black mamba. These are juveniles, so they're going to get a lot longer than this and a little bit thicker. Um, in the wild, these guys love to feed on birds. So what they'll do is they'll climb a tree. They're very arboreal, so they spend a lot of time in the trees. They'll raid nests, go in there, and actually eat the entire uh, clutch of eggs or the actual birds that are in there. So mambas, uh, when they get threatened, um, besides forming that semi-hood that they got there, they'll actually open up their mouth and flash their mouth. And this is actually why the black mamba is called a black mamba. It's not because it is black. It is actually slaty gray. Gray, but the interior of its mouth is actually black. So that's part of its defensive mechanism is to show the inside of its mouth and it's kind of a warning to stay away. They usually give predators a really good warning before they actually have to defend themselves. But snakes don't really attack anyone, they defend themselves. As he's trying to do right now, he's just gonna crawl right back in. As you can see, he's trying to get away. Very, very fast. So this is the Urutu. The Latin name is Bothrops alternatus. So this is a member of the Bothrops family. So although this particular species might not be something you're familiar with, there are other members of the genus that you probably are familiar with. And that would be the Terciopello and the Fertilants. Both are very large, uh, both raw species found in South America, Central and South America. So this particular species is found in Paraguay. Even though this is very well colored, it still gives this animal a pretty good camouflage because it lives amongst the vegetation on the forest floor. And so this breaks the outline of the animal, so it virtually makes it invisible. So it's kind of somewhat similar to what a gaboon viper does. Now another cool thing that he's doing, if you look towards the end of his tail here, he's rattling his tail. So something similar to what a rattlesnake does. Unlike a rattlesnake that has a rattle, this particular type of snake does not. However, on the forest floor, there's a lot of leaves. So by vibrating his tail on the vegetation, it actually produces a rattling sound. This is why it's also very common for other species of non-venomous snakes in the United States, such as the bull snake, to get confused with venomous species because they'll also do this rattling uh, technique on the ground amongst the leaves that produces a rattling sound. They do this purposely non-venomous snakes to pretend to be venomous, but also venomous species will do it as a warning 
to be left alone. So this is a Pit Viper. It's hard to see on his face because he has all these really cool colors on him, but he actually possesses, just like a rattlesnake, some pits on the side of his face which allows them to detect body heat up to a fraction of a degree at nighttime. So what does that mean? Uh, essentially in total darkness and a rat or a mouse pass right by him, he can actually detect that animal's body heat in complete darkness. If you've ever seen the movie Predator, right? He <laughs> kind of has the same thing. He's able to do that, so yeah. it's pretty cool. So this is the Gagoon Viper. So this particular species is found in Africa. There's actually two different species of Gagoon Viper. We have the West African and we have the East African Gagoon Viper. This is a West African Gagoon Viper. And you can see its coloration is really cool looking. Um, and this animal has probably one of the best camouflages. So you can imagine this color blended in in all the leaves and vegetation on the forest floor. It becomes invisible. It belongs to a genus of vipers called a bitis, which includes the rhinoceros viper, obviously the gagoon viper, and several smaller species of vipers that are not as commonly known. Now this is a true viper, right? The reason why it's a true viper as opposed to the Urutu that I showed earlier, or the rattlesnake, is that it lacks the heat sensitive pits that the more recently evolved pit vipers have. It has the largest fangs of any venomous snake, up to two inches long. Um, these guys will consume uh, fairly large prey in the wild. So it'll actually consume a small species of antelope known as the dick dick, which is pretty small. Um, this kaboon looks pretty large. They actually get a lot larger than this. They're a very thick bodied snake. And they're known to live around rivers and waterways um, where they will expect prey to kind of be drinking at the edge of the water. And then they'll sit in an ambush at the same position for weeks. They're very, very sedentary animals that don't do a lot of moving around. West African gaboons have these horns on their tip of their snout. These particular snakes do like to kind of semi burrow underneath the leaves. This is a female and I can tell it's a, it's a female because it has a very short little tail. She's very huffy puffy, um, kind of like cobras that use a very similar way of defending themselves. The Gaboon Viper, besides using its camouflage first, has this loud hiss that it produces that is a warning to tell predators to keep away. Gaboon Vipers have one of the fastest strikes of any snake. So one of the cool telltale signs that you can actually tell when a Gaboon Viper is about to strike at something is the eyes. They'll do this eye twitching and that's all you see and they'll strike at something very quickly unlike a rattlesnake that will bite something and release it and the prey item wanders around and dies further distance away a gaboon viper is a bite and hold on uh, technique that they use um, the animal usually dies pretty quick because they have a huge volume of venom in these venom glands this is the Texas indigo snakes. There is another uh, type of indigo snake called the Eastern indigo, and that one is actually pretty endangered. It is actually federally protected, and this is a Texas indigo. Um, so they're called indigo snakes. They have a really cool shine about them, especially underneath the sun. Um, so these guys are really cool to have around because these guys are snake eaters. So one of the things they'll actually consume are rattlesnakes. So they'll actually eat other rattlesnakes. So it's really good to have these guys around. It's a colubrid, so it's a non-venomous constrictor. Um, right, you can see it's flicking out its tongue and this is how snakes interpret their environment. So what happens is that there's a lot of molecules of scent in the air, and so the snake picks that up with his tongue, and right when he puts his tongue back into his mouth, there's an organ in the roof of his mouth called the Jacobson's organ, and it analyzes those molecules, and he can interpret that as either a prey, a predator, or if it's a, a male, a sexy female snake, <laughs> right? So these guys are egg layers and they'll lay a clutch of eggs which are round and white and leathery to the touch. And when they incubate, they hatch out into little indigo snakes and they disperse into the environment. So this is an indigo snake right here. And then to my right, I have another very dark color snake. Looks very similar to an indigo snake. This is a Mexican black king snake. And this right here is also a snake eater. So this is another snake that's good to have around. They come in a variety of colors, um, anywhere from the California king snake phase, which is very common in the pet trade. And this one is solid black. It looks very similar to the indigo snake. Also a snake eater that's good to have around. It will consume rattlesnakes and other snakes and also rodents. Both of these species are harmless. So if you ever see them, keep them around, leave them alone. They will not hurt you. And they're really good for the environment.
So I'm in my bathroom. I have allergies and my eyes are really red, so I'm not high, I promise. So I would say that was a very successful trip. I love going there and seeing the animals that Nathan and Tony have. And I've been getting some hands-on work with Venomous and learning a lot more about them because there's always so much to learn when it comes to all these different species. I personally want to learn as much as I can about every living thing on this planet. So, <laughs> so go ahead and follow them on their social medias. I will link them in the description and watch for more videos with them. I plan on doing more detailed and specific videos with the different animals that they have in the future. If you have anything specific that you'd like to see, please give me some suggestions in the comments. Things like feeding videos, um, detailed videos about different species, things like that. So before I depart, I wanted to tell you guys about something. I am having surgery on my arm again for the third time and doing that is keeping me from going to Tinley and all of these other shows I had planned for the end of this year and it's going to keep me from using my arm for at least a good two or three months so um, whenever I start feeling a bit better I'm going to make a video talking about what happened and and how it's made me feel how it's affected me my animals and my life so in the next month or two I'll be doing a video telling you guys my story and what happened wish me luck um, if I'm not uploading as much that's probably probably why but and after I am healed and done with this I'm gonna go full force work my butt off and make videos every week or maybe even twice a week for you guys I'm gonna try and keep making my dreams come true and showing you guys my animals and my journey and the process so yeah thanks for sticking by me and watching my videos and um, yeah I'll talk to you guys soon bye Cool. <laughs> I guess uh, let's get that female gaboon. Gabooni. Is her name? Oh, her name's Gabooni. Is it? That's it. Gabooni. Gabooni. <laughs> Gabooni. This is Gabooni. I've named her. They have the smallest fangs of any oh, snake, snake in the world. The smallest fangs. To Isn't it the largest fangs? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, I didn't know. Oh yeah. That. Um, oh. it's not like your standard. White tail deer, it's a very small deer. Are you talking deer. about the dick dick? Yeah. The dick dick! Dick dick. So basically, it's a very <laughs> small yeah, smoke deer. It. You ruined everything! <laughs> Edit! <laughs> Edit! 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 Edit!